What's up everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog, and today is for those of you who potentially want to make a little bit of the harder techno, or if you don't want to do that, you can just follow along and learn something. Anyway, today I'm going to show you a formula in four parts on how to start generating interesting techno material for yourself. Four parts. One, two, three, four. It's a workflow and I'm just going to start by revealing number two and number four first. Number two is a drum machine, some kind of robust drum machine that we're then going to feed into number four, which is distortion. Let me show you this in practice. So you start with a drum machine. You just have to select something, anything that can generate drum sounds, preferably a whole bunch of different drum sounds. For example, in Ableton, you can just literally choose one. It doesn't have to be like one of the Roland's uh, emulation ones. It can be literally anything. And we're going to program a very basic pattern in there. Oh, and of course, because we're doing some harder techno, let's go immediately to one, four, five as a BPM, just so we're immediately going quite fast. Okay, that's aggressive. <laughs> let's tighten that up real quick. Let me add a bit of groove to it. Let's just, let's just work with this, okay? So just a simple drum machine, which I'm now going to distort. Cool. So we can choose how much distortion that we take. And then one thing that we're always going to want to do is resample. So in this workflow, what I want us to do is to take an audio track, take the output from our drum machine, and we're going to just resample. Simple. Okay, done. Now in here, let's just remove this. So now we're going to record on a different channel the output of this. First, we're just going to hit play and then dial in the amount of distortion to taste. When you're working with distortion, you're going to often see big swings in volume, right? So you're always going to have to just adjust gain and volume afterwards. So you're always going to have to set that intentionally yourself. So anyway, let's record something like this. Awesome. And then we're going to do a third layer, which is going to be, we've got some low percussion, we've got some high percussion. So this is going to be some mid percussion. And I'm going to make the loop half a bar long because a lot of techno often focuses on just two beats as a rhythmic cell in a way, whereas the DAW often pushes you towards doing things in, in multiples of one bar. But a lot of techno, you actually want to shorten that down to two bars. Let's adjust the distortion. Good enough for me. There we go. Done. Beautiful. We can now mute our drum machine because we've got these beautiful three layers. Let me just... There we go. And because we're moving so fast, we stay connected with the funness of it, right? We're not overthinking the sound design of any one element. We're just kind of going for a vibe really quick. Now, that was a drum machine into distortion. Now, these two elements in themselves also can be replaced with equivalents. For example, different drum machines and different distortion types. You can experiment and find which one pairs well with which. So we can replace the drum machine with any other drum machine and the distortion with any other distortion. So here I just used Ableton stock stuff, but instead I could also use some third-party VSTs. What are some of my favorites? I'm glad you asked. Here, for example, is Drumazon. This is absolutely in no way endorsed or sponsored by D16, but I love this instrument, so I'm just happy to share that with y'all. So when you hit play on this, you get some kind of like classic 909 sounds. This sounds wicked, straight out the gate. Now let's put some distortion on there, and the whole thing has some built-in distortion, but I want to use my hardware unit, the Culture Vulture that I've got right here. So this is an external audio effect that feeds the drum machine into the distortion unit and then brings it back out. So this audio effect here sends the audio through this thing right here, which is a Culture Vulture, which is analog distortion, and it's really fun to just be able to tweak that with my hands. Let's push this thing into the stratosphere. So without it, and then with it. And so that's now just got a completely different attitude. It may not be the right attitude for you. It's really just up to personal taste. Here, let me just record it into a channel and then use this as a, as a kind of a texture layer inside of our drum room. Look at that waveform. <laughs> Cool, I even add a little bit of gain there at the end so that there's a little bit of movement in it. And so... Nice. 
Let's have a quick look on the Spectrum to see how much this is completely messing up my low end. Yeah, I would probably want to make sure that overall the low end of my track is kind of nice and sweet and clear. So I'm mostly interested in like the mid frequencies of this. I'm not really vibing with that kick anyway, but this is not the point. The point is just that you can take any drum machine and any distortion and just start exploring and see how these two things pair well, like wine and cheese. But so it's up to you to explore what drum machines you like and it's up to you to explore what distortion types you like. Other favorites in the distortion realm include Decapitator and Decimort. Notice what happens when you crank the preamp on the Decimort. It always gives me a good feeling, but I'll let you explore that. Y'all are lucky I committed to finishing this video because I have half a mind to just quit and start making techno all afternoon. <laughs> oh man, I'm really vibing with this. It's so simple and silly and fun and groovy. And there's this beautiful empty pocket ready for a big warm bass sound or something that's gonna warm up our composition. But that's not what this is about. We're gonna stay mostly with percussion today. Maybe I'll add a warm sound for the outro. But right now I wanna bring us back to our four part formula, which we've only discussed number two and number four of. And now we're going to add number one, which is pattern control. You notice that I went in here and I drew in all my patterns by hand. That was pretty cool, but it could also turn into a lot of work and you have to be all intentional about it and blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it's a lot more fun to simply hit randomize on something. Bam. Then you have freaky stuff like this. What the heck? Let's go again. <laughs> here, let's mute everything and just add in a few things. Oh yeah, this is great. Let me tweak my parameters here. Gotta record that. And when you're recording stuff like this, yeah, you get a bunch of random weird little errors like this offset and stuff. In this kind of techno, this can lead to some charming mistakes or some like shortfalls of the recording. Okay, so just being able to dial up random patterns is just super fun because you can just hit next until you get something into the ballpark of where you want to be and then tweak from there. This is supposed to be a genre where it's really just about vibe and feel and rhythm and we're not here to pretend that we're like master instrumentalists or something. Let's remember that we're mostly here to have fun and just sculpt something beautiful. So a lot of different drum machines, they simply have patterns already built in. You know, you can just browse through patterns that already exist. <laughs> Tweak them from there, use them as starting points, mute and unmute various voices, randomize your settings. And one of the coolest things that I find here about Drumazon 2 is that this pattern sequencer that's built into it can send MIDI out so that you can then feed that into literally anything else. So for example, instead of sending audio out, it's going to send MIDI out into this other drum machine. We just have to make sure that we select it and that we select that there and then we hit in. And look how there's MIDI data showing up there. So that means that the patterns from Drumazon are now driving whatever we put here. And what shall we put there? How about we put a, a synth there, something like Basil, and we set it to some kind of like percussion. Oh yeah. Dope. <laughs> That's mad. No, <laughs> that descended into chaos real quick. What if you put a bass on there? <laughs> That's too nasty. No, but anyway, that was pretty cool. And as you know, we can go in and we can tweak the parameters on this. But anyway, the pattern that is feeding into whatever we're playing is now way more interesting, is way more fun and playful. And we're not overthinking like, oh, should I activate or disactivate this particular 16th note? Oh, have I put enough syncopation in this and that? No, you can just kind of smush things around until they feel right. To me, this is why making techno can sometimes be more punk. It's less controlled. It's more about just vibe and moving forward. And speaking of moving forward, let's introduce number three, which is the last part of our diagram, which is some effects before the distortion. And specifically, I'm talking mostly about delays and creative delays. So imagine we've got this really simple pattern, which is again going into the culture vulture or whatever. Here, let's instead use the capitator. Sounds good. Now let's add a creative delay. Let's browse through some settings. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> There's way too much stuff going on. Let's see if I can find something a little more sweet spotish. Things are kind of cool. And let's maybe reduce the amount of feedback on this. Oh yeah, nice. Now let's record it with some movement in it. Oof, it's all a bit loud now. <laughs> okay, so now you risk getting into that ear fatigue kind of phase, right? So the moment things start to get a bit too busy with that, start to think a little bit in terms of movement. Start expanding your loop longer than these four bars. Go to at least 16 bars, right? And whenever you capture a performance, capture it over these 16 bars, and then maybe already start duplicating that and making one section where it's like a break, where you take away the kick. And so you can kind of feel that ebb and flow as things kind of burst and then become thinner and then burst out again. Okay, fun. So do you see how those four elements, when you start exploring all the different variations of each of those four elements, they lead to some really fun hunting for sweet spots. And the sound palette that you get is pretty aggressive, pretty all over the place, which sometimes, honestly, in Ableton's interface, I found that hard to achieve things with that attitude because it's all so clean and it kind of felt like it was pushing me always into a very precise overthinking kind of way of producing and just being able to throw paint at the wall to see what sticks you know i found this super liberating as a workflow now for the outro i'm going to see if i can figure out some kind of simple synth stab to kind of warm this up and give it some dimension remember that i have a full techno course on my website but also a full foundations course to learn how to produce electronic music in a more complete way leave a comment to show me some love come show us on the discord channel what you did with this and until next time stay producing be good to each other and take care Bye-bye.